This is a sponsored video. Hey folks, Flip here, starting out episode number 25 of our hardcore Minecraft survival let's play here. And oh my gosh, thank y'all so very much for the support so far on the series. 25 episodes, wow. We have survived over, let's see the day count here, 711 days. Man, I could go for a Slurpee. If you have enjoyed this series so far, please be sure to click that like button down below. And if you're brand new, my oh my, my friends, we've got a lot more stuff coming here. Hopefully, if we don't die inside this thing, so be sure to subscribe as well. Now, I am currently melting inside of a heat wave that has come across the Pacific Northwest area, so my brain might be a little fried on today's episode. But all that being said, my friends, last episode, we worked on this amazing cliff face right over here that we can fly all the way through, and I think it is so very cool. And I would love to spend a little bit more time working on that, as well as we're going to be doing a world tour today. And I want to start off by saying there will be a brand new world download, or I guess the first world download available for this world here. I really, really like the cliffs that we have over here, but I think there's a few things we can do to make them look even better. And one of those involves the glow lichen that I have here in my hand. If you didn't know, grabbing some shears over here, adding the glow lichen on top of some deep slate helps to lighten it up a lot. And one thing that I found recently through the help of my friend Mythical Sausage is if you do that, it creates a great transition point from the deep slate we have here into cobblestone. I would like that back, please. Thank you. And I think we could add a little bit of cobblestone along the top and then add in some of this glow lichen down here below it. Now, the problem is glow lichen is a little hard to obtain. There's not a whole lot of it inside the world, but thankfully you could come along here, add your bone meal, and it'll send it all the way around. And then you just use the shears to gather it up. Now, I don't have a great supply of bone meal yet, but there's one thing that I know that will help us out a lot with this one here is I want to build up a quick farming area for it. But first and foremost, to Mooshland we go where I really need to build an actual entrance into our villager cave. Yeah, it's going to be coming soon. Don't y'all worry, folks. It's a project I want to get back to very, very shortly. But ignoring the building aspect for now, grabbing a bunch of emeralds for ourselves, and I need a few more books than that. Refill the coffers a little bit, and that should do it for us. Got a bunch more of them there, and we need to get an unbreaking book as well as a mending book. Unbreaking three acquired, mending acquired. And the last one that I was going to acquire, we unfortunately do not have. I found out recently, well, actually looking through the change log of 1.17, is you can now, on top of shears, instead of previously we could just add these two, we could also throw efficiency five on it, but I don't have an efficiency five villager. These are all fortune books, unfortunately, so that's not going to help us out here. It is back to fishing for villager trades. Okay, here we go. There are actually a few of them up here, so let's do that, and we are good to go. I could be here for a little while, so as soon as I find some efficiency trades, I'll be right back with y'all. Oh my lord, finally we have efficiency four, and I'm gonna need a lot of these. So I think we're also gonna zombie purify this thing. Let's just sit for another 10 minutes, it's fine. What else you got for me? What else you got for me? What else you got for me? Lanterns, I will take lanterns. And power one, but glass. I have run into a wee little bit of a problem though, is I'm really not too sure where I put all my golden apples. That could be a bit of an issue. I have looked far and wide and I cannot find my dang golden apples. I had almost a stack of them. If you can find it for me, please be sure to let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, I've got 54 apples that I found inside my chest and we've got a lot of gold in here. And thankfully we've also got a lot of gold ore. I can fortune down and then we can smelt it up. But first, there we go. Apparently we have 28 chests sitting inside of here. Yeah, I'm gonna take those back with me. We are all set for zombie purification. Come on, buddy, you gotta go meet the zombie first. And there we go. Bringing up good old Henry here and they gotta say hello for a quick second. Oh, no, I guess I'll back all the way over here. Goodbye, Henry, and hello to my new efficiency book trade. Throwing that guy all the way up there. Hopefully we hit him, we did, perfect. Well, that's all going on. It's time to grab the fortune pickaxe and head above ground and break all this stuff down. This really has turned into quite the adventure just to get efficiency five on some shears. But at least it means we get to get a lot of new butter out of this here. So taking this all the way back down. We had three stacks of ore. Not sure how much we'll get. I just got all the way down here and notice that you don't get experience from mining gold ore. Do you get it from iron? But regardless, check this out right over here. We're almost at eight full stacks of gold off of the three stacks of ore we had. That's a little overpowered. Fortune three, it's insane. Finally, the rain can go away. 
And we've got our brand new friend over here who is ready to go. Let's send him all the way down. What do you got for me, buddy? What do you got for me? Oh, five emeralds? What is that? Make me pay more than one emerald for an enchanted book. Come on, well, who is this guy? I think he is. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I don't know where I'm going to put you quite yet, so I'm leaving you there for now. Okay, bye. Efficiency five book there. Throwing it on the shears, and those things are insane. If you have any name ideas for the shears, let me know again down in the comments below. Now that we've got the shears sorted, my friends, it is time to actually figure out where the heck we're going to be farming these things. And oh my gosh, I think that's just like one of my favorite parts about Minecraft is sometimes you're working on a project and it just it has so many more steps than you think it would. That was something that I was expecting to be like, all right, this will be like 20 seconds to get a new set of shears. And then no, that turned into like a half hour to get it. But that is totally fine. I'm thinking we come back in here as we're already clearing out a little bit of a room for ourselves take a few torches and slap them on the ground because the glow lichen does glow but it only gives off a light level seven so i think what we can do just for now for a starter farm is we go with these guys right around here and a little hanging root to decorate the entrance because why not this is going to be very very temporary we'll get an actual farm for these guys built out here soon but i think this should work Ooh, it can even spread around the sides <gasps> good can I spread to the roof? It can. Bone meal will have to get sorted soon. Right now, I'm just literally using the nether to gather it from Soul Sand Valleys. Oh my gosh, even the floor could be glow likened. I had to do it. I had to take the torches out and just see what this looks like. And holy cow, it's really cool looking. But check this out right over here. We are on light level seven, even standing literally on top of the light source. So that doesn't work out too well. But this right here. Ooh. I think my favorite part about glow lichen is you can break these quarter ones. You see the three right there is it gives you three glow lichen. Instead of vines, that would only give you one vine. This amount of glow lichen should keep us set for a long time. Filling up the cave twice there gave us almost two and a half stacks of the stuff, and I don't think I'll really be using that much inside of these cliffs. Ooh, we are running very low on rockets. We got just a stack and 20 left. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind here. Now, I'm not feeling too confident on this right now, but I wanna give it a try just to show that we did. So I'm thinking we come out over here and remove a lot of this deep slate towards the top, kind of like that in there, maybe a little bit less. I'm thinking if we go pretty light on the cobblestone now, and then we add in a little bit of this glow lichen around and have this kind of starting to blend everything in here between the tough, the cobblestone, and the deep slate with the glow lichen on top of it, I think that could be really, really cool. Now, how do we feel about this over here? You know what? I kind of like it. I'm not really too opposed to it right now. I think what we could do also is take a few of the deep slate blocks like we have those guys and turn the top section of this one inwards. That could be pretty cool. Something about right like this should look really cool. From up close, it does look a little hectic, but I don't think I'm opposed to it. Honestly, what I might do is instead of the cobblestone, is just bring in more tough block. I think that might look a little bit better. Let's take a look at this from far away though. Yeah, I'll be honest from right over here when we're looking purely at the color standpoint of this whole thing is I like the tough in there, but the cobblestone is a little bit too bright and it's making the stone brick and everything inside the castle not feel as grand or just standing out so much as a highlight, which I was really enjoying. Well, we got the plan now, my friend, so let's go ahead and kick this off in a little bit of a good old fashioned time lapse mode and get this thing transformed one more time. With even more shulker boxes gathering at our building location, the shulker monster grows, but so does our build over here, my friends. Holy cow, it's looking really, really cool. Decided to bring down a few of the dripstone pointed thingies over here to create some spiky rocks because, you know, if maybe it falls off the edge, they just are gonna go on the spikes over there and it'll be great. Now, I didn't detail too much out in this direction over here because I don't really know what I'm doing with the rest of the train, but we've got everything in here sorted and it looks fantastic. The only thing that I still wanna bring more in of of is some of the dead coral. I think adding some dead coral fans and things like that along the base here could be super duper cool, but we can grab that here shortly. Next up on the list, my friends, I was thinking it would be time to update our maps inside of our area. Over here, we're gonna have a big old transformation off of this map right there. Look at that, all of that new sandy beach area coming in, and that kind of looks like the shape of Italy 
just ever so slightly. It's got a little bit of a shoe shape to it. Okay, moving over here, you can see all that stuff is getting updated. And then I think we might have a little bit up in that side there too, maybe, but we've got everything over there. Looks like that dude's already added in. And oh, we got to really get this whole side over here. Okay, it has been a long time since I've updated this map. Holy cow, not none of this little section over here was involved at all. So that is super cool to get that in. And our brand new bridge that I just love so very much. We built that thing last episode and it's looking so cool. It's got me inspired for another project we can do today. But there we go. I believe all of the maps are up to date. Now at this location, we've got the other ones around here that we'll check on as we're going and doing the world tour. For now, my friends, I'm down to one stack of rockets. So this time for me to afk at the creeper farm safely and securely in my little box here so it is time to tell you about today's sponsor express vpn access to the internet is more important than it has ever been and that's where express vpn comes into play here my friends as it gives you the ability to access the entirety of the internet to its fullest express vpn is a simple tool that allows you to mask your ip so you can make it seem like you're accessing the internet from another country securely and anonymously if you're like me and you didn't know netflix had shows that were exclusive to regions we recently found that out and it has been awesome since we can watch shows like modern family on netflix by connecting to the uk and refreshing the web page. ExpressVPN is a great way to protect your data by encrypting 100% of that data leaving your device, so not even your internet provider or ExpressVPN themselves can access it. If this sounds interesting to you, you can find out how to get three months free on ExpressVPN by using the link down in the description, expressvpn.com slash flip. A hop, skip, and a jump away, and we are outside of our safety box, and let's go check how the gunpowder farm has been doing. Oh my lord, there are a lot of mobs out here. Okay, I guess it was just night time recently maybe we fly away coming on back now looks like we are all clear of the scary monster so let's head on down into the cave and see how much gunpowder we got i'm really excited about this one holy cow okay this farm is doing well yeah look at you little guys look at you little guys up there oh the best Okay, okay, well, you know, we got rockets. We got lots of rockets. I did wanna pause here a moment and say a big thank you to you all for being okay with me picking up a few sponsors here and there for some videos to help keep some awesome videos coming for all of you here. So thank y'all so very much for being on board with that one here today, but back to the regular scheduled Minecraft in action for the rest of the episode. Also, I did it, folks. I found the golden apples. They were sitting in the shulker box the entire time that I pulled many things out of. The entire time building this place and just now realize they're there. But look at that, we got over a stack of golden apples. <laughs> Funny number of golden apples. Rockets are being acquired and that's gonna be absolutely awesome. And I don't even have a shulker box. We'll put them with all the wither skeleton roses. That'll be fine. Fireworks and wither roses. Okay, that is a very deadly box. Next up on the list for today's episode, my friends, is I really want to transform our roadway leading from over here up to the castle. As I've mentioned to y'all before, and we built our first building over here, is I want to build a town in this back area. But one thing I thought would be really cool is that we could actually bring the ocean water flowing through this direction. So if we carve this area open, similar to what we have in the lower area underneath the cliffs that we were just working on, we kind of bring that same idea and bring it all the way back into here. And then taking the same bridge design that we had on the far side over there, we can incorporate that right into here across this section and then bring some of that water and a bunch of sand back over in here. And I think if we do like a little bit of a circular area, something right along this could be super duper cool just to have some ocean water flowing all the way in here. I decided working on the bridge first here was probably the smart idea. So I've got the stone brick in around the edge and just getting in the few stairs that we have so we can start adding in. And the torches and keep this place a little bit safer over here i've had to redirect the roadway just to touch off of here but i think it'd be really cool bringing ourselves with that waterway as i mentioned all the way back into here and then having a road going around that backside and can kind of be the front of where we're going to be having some town buildings stretching all the way around it building this thing the second time has been so dang quick i was really not expecting it to come together this easily but i'm really really liking it so far and adding in the little banners right there i think that's gonna be absolutely awesome there it is, that's looking pretty dang good. Now all we've gotta do is get the actual landscape sorted out around here where I'm thinking we can start off where the curve comes this way and then redirect it coming back, okay. 
Uh, coming back all the way in through there. Got it. That's that's the way it's going to be going. Now, the Minecraft gods seem to have a different plan for this one, but my plan was to have something right along here coming throughout, and I'll figure out a way to fill all this in. I think I need to go get a little bit of dirt. Been making a few new friends over here with my kitty cats hanging out with them, and then we've got a wandering trader sitting right up there on top of the bridge that uh, he's not doing too much. He really seems to enjoy the bridge, though, so just letting him hang out right up here for now. If only he had some small drip leaf. You want to come back with that next time, please? That'd be that'd be fantastic. Nope, nope, still none. All right. Right now, I'm trying to sort out the transition between the sandy beach that we have out here and turning it into almost like a saltwater pond of sorts because I want to have the grass and the dirt and maybe even some of the moss blocks because we had them down here. It could be kind of fun just to throw them in a little bit, but I think we can get a really cool transition, at least in the texturing and moving away from that sand into some coarse dirt and things over here. But I think I need a little bit more. Yeah, I only got two left. All right, I got to go find some gravel. Base layer one is pretty much in place now. I got coarse dirt kind of all over the place in here, and I really like it. I think it's looking absolutely fantastic down here. Now, if we just get the water filled in, the next step I'm thinking is we can bring in a little bit of cobblestone and maybe some mossy stone so that we can get some really cool rock structures down here just to help echo everything else that we've been doing. And I've been slowly bringing in the edges around here too because I don't want to have a whole lot of space nearby the water so I was thinking we could bring in a little bit of a sandy beach maybe the inhabitants of the town were like you know what we love sand we love hanging out at the beach it's absolutely fantastic because who doesn't like that so let's go ahead and import some sand back here bring it all the way from out there all the way back in here and just so we can have a nice little sandy beach and a protective cove behind our bridge and with a little bit more love this area is starting to look super duper fantastic over here I'm really liking the bridge that we've got set up and this area back here it's gonna need a lot more work around it I I love that tree that we have over there so i think a few of them around the area could be super cool but i've actually but instead of working on those trees right now i realized that we have the little turtles hanging out right over here and i love these dudes that guy seems to be heading off to do whatever the heck he wants but we've got these two here and i believe this is their home beach and one thing i was thinking about that i've always wanted to do is give them a little bit better of a home than just you know the edge of a beach so grabbing a little bit of the deep slate from over here i think we can give them a little bit of like a cove of sorts right in the there and do a tiny bit of terraforming around here and make it look super duper cool now i do know minecraft turtles need a little bit of defensive especially if you're trying to breed some turtles and get some turtle eggs over here so we've got to be very very careful of a lot of what we're doing in here making sure that it's mob proof and that zombies won't be able to get inside you know uh break the turtle eggs that we're trying to spawn inside of here that being said, I thought it'd be really cool to bring ourselves out just a touch in this place right about to here and giving ourselves a few lanterns so there's a little bit of light around here. Then, of course, we've got some hanging roots that we can use because why the heck not? They look really cool and we're trying to make this into a small cove, so it'll work out great, right? Around the back now, we've got to stack up a lot of the blocks of grass over here so it can start to overhang just a touch even further and bring ourselves out another block in here. And then I want to bring back a little bit of the azalea that we have with all of the bushes like we used up there and just add them in for a lot of extra detail. This is the ultimate. I'm doing this because I want to and I want to make it look super duper pretty, but there's real no reason for doing it. <laughs> I feel like with turtles, you can just kind of let them go do their own thing and they'll be absolutely happy down there as long as you give them some seagrass you know for a two minute build this really doesn't look half bad i kind of like it i really actually like this one just adding a little bit more of the hanging roots because we can up there and i think it's time that we actually breed these guys so we get some turtle eggs in there two birds with one stone situation in here is i want to add a little bit of seagrass under this point here too and then we can just take our super shears and clean it up just a touch now my turtley friends we make a baby we make a baby right here this is your beach, please? Yes? No, please don't swim away. No, I just I just made this for you. Why would you swim away? I just made this. Do you want more sand? I can give you more sand. Do you want more sand? More sand? Is that enough sand? Is that enough sand for... I lost the other one too. Where did he go? Oh, I think we're doing it. Oh, we're seeing the fluttering. Ooh, the sand is flipping around. We got enough sand down here, everybody. Look at that. We're getting our brand new turtle babies. Maybe. I won't look. I won't, I'll, I'll look away. I'll look away. He is really getting in there now. Okay. Gotta get the eggs down. Please? Please. What are you doing, my friend? Do you want to get over here? You you don't want sand here, but you want the sand over there. <gasps> there we go, finally! Holy cow, that took a long time, but we've got the turtle egg, my friends. I think I'm gonna put a few torches right over here just to keep it a little bit safer. 
You did a fantastic job. Look at your little leg right there. Look at it, it's beautiful. In regards to the turtle leg, I believe it needs to have access to the sky. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw him right here instead of over there, just to make it a little bit closer to the actual cave itself. But that is looking super duper sweet. Now, my friends, as many of you are all probably aware at this point in time, we are on episode 25 and I wanted to do a quick world tour to walk through everything that we have done so far in this series as a little bit of a recap and reminisce about the lovely previous 24 episodes that we have done. There we go, everything is packed up now and the great place to start this one out is right at our starter base over here. We landed inside of this world a little off in that direction over there inside of a spruce forest. Our last hardcore season, we lived in a mega taiga and I didn't wanna do that again. So we came all the way down here, crossed Mushlandia because I was like, I don't know if I wanna settle down there quite yet and ended up right here where we built this house and a little bit of a compound around here. The original goal was to make everything fenced in and completely spawn proof to keep ourselves safe and everything along those lines, but it didn't really happen in the end. I kind of was like, yeah, we'll just go outside the wall. It'll be fine. We've got our little starter house action in here with a bunch of new gold that I smelted up. We can take all this stuff over to the storage room here with us in just a moment. But first, we've got the little bedroom right back in here where I spend many, many a night sleeping inside of that. I actually don't really use travel beds all that often. I tend to fly back here and use that just in case we go to the end or something like that and I need to pop back out. I like to respawn right back in here instead of world spawn. That being said, up in here, we have the absolutely massive storage room in this tiny little hut that has actually done a lot for us over here. I wasn't really expecting this to hold as much stuff as it does, but when we get into the barrels in the corners as well, it's really working out. I think we will have to start moving along to something a little bit better or go get some more shulkers here soon because a lot of these guys are starting to overflow. Over here, we've got a lovely stables where I set up some horses and donkeys and actually a mule. I tend to not really like traveling around the Minecraft world using these. So they've just kind of sat here, including a chicken next to our anvil, but that's okay with me. Sometimes I like to just build those things early on in the game just to have them as a decoration bit later on to show that we've grown into bigger, grander things. Speaking of which though, we've got some animal pens over here. I actually use these quite a bit. The sheep pen was what I used the most until we recently set up that sheep farm a few episodes back. We've got our pig and sheep pen over here, and we've got the cattle pen over here which has given us many a food item throughout the entire, which has given us so much food throughout this entire world. Without that little section, we would have starved so many times. It was definitely the cows that kept us alive and not all of the fields down here, but they are looking super duper cool. I've wanted to every single episode expand and add at least one more field in. I think we've pretty much accomplished that. Episode 25 and about 25 different fields around here. Something like that, give or take one or two, but I think it's super duper cool. We've got an awesome windmill up there. It's a unique design that I've never really tried anything like that before. Thought that was really fun though. Down here we've got the entrance into our mines with just a little bit of a drop chute elevator right over there with a water elevator bring us back up right in there. Of course we can't forget about Creeper Rock over there which kind of looks like a f just different of course, we can't forget about Creeper Rock Art over here and all of the berry bushes I keep running into. Then over here, we've set up a small little village for ourselves, which is super duper cool. I love this place. I think it was so fun building up these little houses just to have something set up down here along the water's edge. And I really want to expand some more on that and do some more stuff along those lines with adding in some more of the docks and the town and everything right over in that area. I think it'd be super duper cool. We've got our enchanting tower and potion brewing area right inside of this big old structure over here. Absolutely love this one and definitely almost fell off of it once or twice. I don't think we even had feather falling before we built this big old tower, so that would have been absolute death if we fell off the top, but that's okay. We've got our orange house in here full of all of our bees and everything like that. They're doing absolutely awesome. I wanna get these guys, or at least a lot of them, moved into the nether here soon. Clear up the leg and the overworld a touch more and then also make sure they're actually a lot more efficient because if they're in the nether, they never stop working because there's no day night cycle. As mentioned previously, we've got the sheep farm right over here, which is super duper cool. Just a bunch of chests right over there. And we built this thing up recently. Go check like the last two episodes. It's all in there. But we've got, is this a new wandering trader? Are you another one? No, you're the same one. Now we'll know if we get a new one. But up here, my friends, we have the glorious castle that we have been working on. And I recently found out that the Shaders beta version of Optifine has been released. So let's throw those guys on. Okay, so uh, remember, this is a beta release of Optifine here, and things are a little glitchy. Uh, the You know what? Looks kind of cool. Looks kind of cool. 
But Enchanting Glints, uh, they don't seem to be functioning at all. But check this place out that seems to be very functional. Taking a quick fly back over here, and oh my gosh, the castle looks so much more amazing. Holy cow, this looks a lot better than I could ever have imagined. Oh my gosh, I love this place. We've been working on this castle for quite a few episodes now, and it is insane. This is how I used to build a lot in Minecraft. This is kind of back to the roots for me of my Minecraft building career way, way back when I had started my channel. And funny enough, right before this episode goes live, actually right now, about 15 minutes ago, I broke 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. And we were building stuff like this back when I had two to 3,000 subs. And it is so fun to come back to doing this style of building. I've been absolutely loving it. And I'm really glad I decided to take on this challenge over here. We've got a lot of interiors still to build out on the castle. And I do want to come through and finish them. I see you down there, zombie. I see you. I know I need to light that up. I'm not going to risk it while I have these laggy shaders on, though. But my oh my, that is just looking fantastic. Holy cow, I can't wait to keep working on this thing. Flying directly east over here, I wanted to leave the shaders on so we can check out the new cavern that we've been building in Minecraft. 1.17 land over here, we've got the brand new terrain and we've been working on building this absolutely insane cavern throughout here. I still gotta finish up that backside, but you can get a good idea of what we got going on around this entire area. Look at all of this stuff. Oh, it looks so cool. There we go. That is a much better view of this spot. Oh, man. I can't wait to finish this. The plan is to go deep slate all the way down to the base in there. And then I also want to transform this entire little rail network that we have and build something really cool in this cavern. So it's not just as open strip throughout here. So I want to turn this almost in like smaller amethyst geodes and dripstone stuff all over the place. I think it's going to look really cool. T is still hanging out up there. Don't worry, folks. They are safe. Of course, we still need to come up here to the top and finish off Axolotl Lake inside of the mountains, but they're all swimming around in here still. I don't think we've lost any of them so far, which is really cool. There we go. There's Oreo. I see you, buddy. Or is that Cookie? I can't remember. What do we name him? Back over at the farm now here, we've got our pups hanging out there, and then we've got this goals board up here, which I need to refill with some new goals. All we've got is auto farms and build a castle and build a city on Mooshland and survive. And there's a lot of empty signs in there, so any ideas you have, please be sure to let me know. I got even 10 more signs down there we can use. But it is about time that we head over to Mooshland and just check that place out real fast. Inside of the nether, we've got right through the portal down here, goes straight off to our future wither skeleton farm. Still got to get more roses to finish that dude up. Right there is the exit from of our roof caverns. Over there goes to the end portal, and then down this way leads to Mooshland. And our stupidly overpowered iron farm down here. That's uh, got a lot of stuff in it. I haven't cleared this out or AFK'd in this area for too long. We've got our magical villager breeder right over there, and we've got the iron farm right over here respectively, and then down inside the cavern, we've got this uh, very, very poor way of uh, getting down into our villager trading hall. I know we were here earlier in today's episode, and that dude is still chilling over there, but we've got this awesome setup down here. Over here, we've got all of our farmers, we've got all of our stonemasons, we've got sugarcane farms up above. Then continuing farther down this way, we've got a clock there to know what time it is. We've got all of our all of our librarians so far, minus uh, that guy down there. We'll get him down here shortly. And then up here, we've got a double pumpkin and melon farm rocking, which is giving a lot of really cool stuff that I keep using to repair all my tools just for the experience and off of all of the trading. But I'm thinking about setting up two more of them over here. I don't really know. That is something we can get to here shortly, my friends. I want y'all to let me know down in the comments below what project do you want to see me focus on? Mooshland, building up the city, building out the villager trading hall, working on the castle and finishing up that project, or keeping to expanding the farmland, or maybe even the 1.17 zone with the lake and all that stuff. Let me know down in the comments below. Before we get on out of here, because we can, I always love to look at the stats. We're in 25 episodes in. We've got 75,000 uses on a netherite pickaxe, 43,000 on a diamond. I can't believe it took me that long to get netherite. Then we've got all of the things inside of here. Now, what have we used the most to build with? It looks like dirt. Naturally, it's me. So yeah, dirt is uh, up there. The fact that potatoes is still up here this far, that's, uh, that's saying something. We have thrown more eggs than we have used a netherite sword. Thank you, chickens, for the wither roses. And with that, we have survived 6.64 days, my friend. Holy cow, we've done a lot of work in this one. I am absolutely loving this hardcore series, and I cannot wait to see what else we could accomplish in this one. I am definitely not taking this totem of undying out of my offhand for a very, very 
long time, but my friends, that's going to have to do it for today's episode. Thank you all so very much for watching. I really do appreciate all of your support on this one, so please be sure to click that like button down below. If you'd like to get your hands on the world download, it is available for Twitch subs, YouTube members, as well as patron supporters, and join the Discord, and it'll be linked inside of there in those respective channels. Thank you again so very much. Be sure to subscribe if you are brand new, my friends, and with that, I will catch you on the flip side.